Welcome to this short video about mentoring on the BSc Applied Accounting program. My name is Graham Diggle. I'm a module leader, marker and moderator on the BSc Applied Accounting program. And I'm going to say a few words about the requirements of the program for mentoring and you. The objects of this brief video are to set out the rationale for mentoring, inform you of the program requirements for mentoring. So why do you need a mentor? It's a requirement of the BSc Applied Accounting Programme that all students preparing a research and analysis project be mentored. The project is quite different in its demands from the exams for the fundamental papers of the ACCA qualification. It involves you in managing extended research, information gathering, application of theoretical frameworks and business models, analysis of data, information, opinions on issues which may not be at all clear cut, and all of these difficult tasks can benefit from the support and guidance of a mentor. So who can be a mentor? Well, it can be a tutor at a college or learning provider. It could be a senior colleague at work, perhaps your line manager. It could be a qualified, chartered, certified accountant. You may get permission from the ACCA office at Oxford Brooks for a mentor who doesn't fall into these categories, but holds an equivalent qualification, either professional or academic. From January 2015, there is an additional qualification. Mentors must have completed the online mentoring course and be registered as an approved mentor with Oxford Brookes University. So let's think about what the BSc Applied Accounting Programme requires. You should have three half-hour meetings as a minimum with your mentor. They may be more meetings or they may be longer, depending on what you agree with your mentor. They don't have to be in person or face-to-face. -face. It could be mediated by Skype or some other kind of uh, link. In the final meeting, the mentor will see your presentation on your research report and discuss your findings with you. So let's look at the content of the various meetings that you should have. In the first meeting, you're likely to be talking about planning and your research analysis project title. So you would be discussing possible topic areas. What are your motivations for your choice of topic? Which organisations might be suitable? For example, can you gather information about them? And where would you gather this information from? In the second meeting, you'll be discussing the research report progress. So you'll discuss your progress and the extent to which you've met the objectives for the research report so far. You'll be discussing adherence to the research project criteria and meeting timescales for finishing the project in a timely fashion. The third meeting centres on the presentation. You're required to prepare a 15-minute presentation using PowerPoint or similar software. You should give the mentor a copy of the presentation notes before the presentation. And you will then discuss the presentation. Was there effective use of the presentation software? Did you use effective communication skills? And was the presentation really linked to your research reports analysis and findings? It will be an opportunity also to reflect on preparing the research report. What were the main challenges you faced? What could have been done better? What went well? What would you do differently with hindsight? And you'll be making notes of these things for inclusion in the skills and learning statement. Let's talk briefly about mentoring and the skills and learning statement. The mentoring model fits neatly with the reflective learning cycle. The mentor prompts, questions, challenges. This helps you, the student, travel around the learning cycle of acting, reflecting on that action, taking learning from what you've done forward into further action. This also gives you material for your skills and learning statement. Your mentor should encourage you to make good reflective notes of your meetings with them, to set out the challenges and problems you met in writing the research report. How did the mentor help you? What questions did the mentor ask? In what way did the mentor th make you think differently about your approach? Research has shown that reflective learners become much more resourceful problem solvers in the future. Finally, authentication of your work. Your mentor will be asked to confirm that they have acted as your project mentor and that the project is your own work. They will be in a good position to do this because they will have seen and discussed the research report in progress. You will have to provide their contact details so that they can be contacted for this purpose. Well, thank you for listening. I wish you every success in your studies.